read it. Yes. <clears throat> Actually, I think somebody <clears throat> called the other day. There was a phone call came in that interrupted uh, the process. So sometimes I don't know that because I'm working. But uh, functions. Listen, this whole course is about functions. And and and. And, and at the beginning, we sort of talk about a variety of functions, although next class, we'll kind of focus on lines, linear functions. But, but at the beginning, we can talk about any kind of function. Listen, here's what a function is. Uh, <clears throat> I just, here's my definition. A function in, <clears throat> is a relationship, and maybe you know some of this already. I'm going to say it's a relationship between two variables, between two variables, you know, usually we call those X and Y, but we could use any letters to tell you the truth. A relationship between two variables um, where every input, every input variable, and, and, and what do we usually call the input variable? Do you know? X. That is the one we usually call X, although, right. Uh, where every input has <coughs> exactly one output, one output variable. So there, it's kind of assigned, assigned. One input is assigned to one output, and that output is usually the y variable. Right. <clears throat> so that's the definition of a function. And the truth is, all course long, we study functions. We study various types of functions. But right at the beginning, we kind of, to get to know what is a function, we kind of expose you to some questions of, well, is this a function? Is this not a function? What, what is and what's not a function? Again, the rest of the semester, we're kind of studying functions. Uh, but <clears throat> at the beginning, what is or what's not a function? Um, <clears throat> and to be a function, it's got to meet this definition. Every input has exactly one output. Uh, that's kind of to, to shorten up this definition. Every input has one output. That's what makes it a function. Can you tell right off the bat what would be a violation of that? I guess if every if, if you found an input that had two outputs. If, if that happened, if you found an input that had two outputs assigned to it, that would be a violation and it would be a relationship. It would be a mathematical thing, but it wouldn't be a function. We'll look at an example or some examples. Uh, <clears throat> Here's a relationship between two variables. <clears throat> There's a relationship between two variables. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, right off the bat, I'm gonna I want to do this. Uh, what I gave you here is an equation. You know, what you can do, uh, and we'll. <clears throat> It turns out this is a line, and we'll study lines in a little bit more detail. We'll talk about slope. We'll talk about all this just coming up next next class, I think. Today, though, I'm just kind of, I don't want to get into all that. I'm kind of worried about functions, and I'm worried about introducing these functions. Um, so when you have a relationship like this, one thing you can always do is sort of do this thing. I guess we call it plotting points, where you make a chart, uh, fill in, look at the, a chart of x's and y's. Um, and you can, <clears throat> and some students get stuck right here, they, they, they don't know what to plug in for x. Well, guess what? Most likely you're allowed to plug anything you want in for x. So, but, well, good work, but that kind of freezes them up. Well, what do I plug in? Well, anything you want, you know? A good idea, maybe a negative number. Uh, let me try. If I plug in a negative 2, I plug it in, I do the math. What is y? When you plug in a negative 2 for x, you can find the y that goes with it. Uh, anybody? Negative 11. Negative 11, thank you. <clears throat> you plugged it in, you multiplied, you, right, good job. Hey, by the way, did I get two Y's? No, just one Y, right? One input has one output so far. You know, maybe, I don't know, let's see what I find next. Uh, let me try a zero, that's cool. Plug in a zero, what do you get? Thank you. Negative five, right? Easy. Right, plug in a one, what do you get? Uh, not a one, let's try something else. Plug in a two, what do you get when you plug in a two? One. Six minus five, you get one. So anyway, so far, it's pretty easy. I'm plugging in one input and getting one output. I get, if I asked you, is this a function? 
I mean, you haven't done every X in the world, but it looks like so far, uh, every X has one Y, right? Looks like this is a function. Um, <clears throat> when it is a function, then there is another way to write this. And, and we use function notation, which is this. <clears throat> Instead of the variable Y, we call y f of x. So that's called function notation, and it's just another name for y. And sometimes it, it confuses or bothers students a little bit. Uh, so, but right off the bat, we're, we do talk like this. We talk like this all semester. So I'm, uh, I'll try to explain this to you. I mean, the best explanation is what I just said. It's just another name for y. It's just a different way of notating y. Um, <clears throat> I want to say you read this, uh, <clears throat> f of x is sort of how you read, read that phrase, f of x. It's a <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so when I wrote this relationship on the board, I wanted you to see the two variables, uh, but I, instead of y, I could have wrote f of x equals 3x minus 5. Uh, I mean, this is just another, it's, it, it's the same thing, it's the same thing. But then when I made my chart, instead of writing y, maybe I would have wrote f of x here instead of y. It's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. And I could have plotted these points. <clears throat> but when I have this function notation, it, 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 it does allow me to talk a little differently. Now watch this, I could, I could write this chart uh, a little differently, I could talk like this. What's f of negative 2? And, and what that says is, um, uh, I mean, again, you kind of got to know what this says. And what it says is x is a negative 2. You, ple you plug it in the function, and, you find, and, and the answer to this is the y value. Uh, this, this is, the answer to this is the y value that goes with x is negative 2. And uh, we all know what that is. It's there in the chart. It, I can plug it in if I wanted to. Plugging in a negative 2 for x means plug in a negative 2 for x and see what you get. And the answer is negative 11. I could plug in f of 0. Plugging in a 0 for x written like that. And then this, and I know this is, again, this is the start of this class. And I know this isn't that hard, but I do also know it can bother some students. The function notation bothers, can bother students sometimes. They don't, but you need to understand that, <clears throat> that this is the input <clears throat> and, and, and after you work it out, it spits out the output. Our homework, our My Math Lab homework will use some of this language, input and output. So I, I'm trying to do that with you. Uh, anyway, if I plugged in a zero, I get, uh, well, I can do it. I get negative five. I already sort of did it. I can read this chart and it's the same thing. <clears throat> All right, listen, I'm tying some thoughts together. Watch what comes next. Maybe you know what comes next. I mean, once you plot a lot of points, uh, just kind of gave it away. I mean, once you plot these these guys, this x goes with this y, this x goes, that you can call these ordered pairs. Uh, uh, same thing here. I can write these as ordered pairs. Um, so, uh, and, and an ordered pair is an x comma y, and it is a uh, it is a point on a graph, is what it is. So this is leading me to a graph here. Uh, maybe you knew that already, but. I'm just tying these thoughts together. In other words, I mean, uh, when x is negative 2, what's y? Negative 11. When x is 0, y is 5. Uh, oops, negative 5. When x is 2, <clears throat> y was 1, I guess. Right, you guys? This is kind of funny. This is very simple stuff, but I've, I've got three ways to write this very simple stuff. I mean, here... Here it is in chart form, x's and y's, data, data that fits this equation. Uh, here it is in function notation form, but this is still an x and a y. I'd like you to know how to read that, right? And 
Here it is again, an X and a Y. But when you write it as these ordered pairs and you write it as these points, then you're tempted to graph it on a, uh, on a good old X and Y axis. And if you graph these points, there's millions of these points. You know, I only plotted three here. Uh, there's, I could keep going forever. There's millions of points. But if I plot these three points and connect the dots, I have a graph. Um, uh, two, one, that's two, one. Right, you guys? Over two and up one. We sort of talked about that the other day, and that's very basic algebra. Uh, zero, negative five. X is zero. Y is negative five. Uh, negative 2, negative 11. X is negative 2 and Y is negative 11. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's not too bad. I, I, you know, I try to be accurate. Yes, I, I'm also teaching and I got a lot to say and I'm trying to be kind of quick. So I'm trying to be quick, but I'm trying to be neat and accurate. You should sort of do the same thing. Uh, anyway, I've got a nice picture. This, I, I already told you a little while back, this is a line. If you connect these dots, there's no curving going on here. Oops, hang on. You know, there's not supposed to be any curving going on. It's supposed to be a line, nice straight line. <clears throat> and it has a slope and it has a y-intercept, and, and those are important ideas for lines, uh, but I think I'll just shut up a second. Uh, that's, I'll talk more about lines and <clears throat> uh, maybe later today or next week. Um, so cool, man. I, that, that, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I got another thing to say. Um, uh, <clears throat> one thing I do when I'm running this video, I just mentioned this, uh, I'm, I'm sort of working between this line and this line. So I'm running out of room here. Uh, <clears throat> and I wanted to say one more thing here. I wanted to say, just uh, give myself a little space. This was y equals 3x minus 5. This was this equation we started with and discussed. Um, <clears throat> Okay, watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna describe a little word problem to you. You ready? <clears throat> At uh, 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 at is not appropriate. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> on uh, August first, my uh, my bank account had a balance uh, was uh, negative five dollars. But, uh, but every day, in this teaching business, you know, every day I earn $3. That's how teachers do it. Uh, anyway, this is my first little soiree into uh, word problems. We do plenty of word problems in this, in this book. Uh, and what I'd like to, for you to try to realize here is I, <clears throat> I gave you a function, and we've talked about this function a lot of different ways here. Um, when I started uh, today, we talked about this function, and it was in, e in an equation form. It, I gave you the equation. That's the way we like it. You know, we started there. That's, that's the way we like to start. But very quickly, uh, here's the same function, you guys, right here or sort of here, uh, but, but now it's in um, uh, data form or, 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 or chart form, you know what I mean? I mean, forget the equation for a minute. Here's a, here's a function in data form, okay? And then that data led to, well, there's the data also, organized as points, this is all the data. And then that data led to what we call a graph. So here's a, this is a graph, a picture of the function. And now, what I just did to you is I wrote some words that describe this function. Uh, this, these words are this function. Uh, uh, <clears throat> if we call August 1st um, day zero, that might not really 
make sense to you that I do. That's the first day of, well, I want to call it day zero. And let's just check this out. Uh, 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 on day zero, uh, how much money did I have in the bank? Negative five dollars. Uh, one day later, you know, it looks like according to this word problem, every day I earn three dollars. So one day later, how much money did I have in the bank? Negative two. Two days later, how much money did I have in the bank? One dollar. And maybe you can tell that this, what's going on in this word problem is it sort of started at negative five dollars. And then I'm, I've got this, <clears throat> listen to this word, a rate of change. Uh, the, the data is changing every day by how much? Three dollars. It kind of had a starting point. I'd call that the starting point. And then it's changing every day by three dollars. Guess what? This is a word problem that describes the, this is not some new function, is it? This is the same function we've spent 20 minutes discussing here, right? So, cool, I don't do every problem like this, but to introduce functions and, and to introduce this course in a way, I, I like to do this. What, well, again, one more time, I've presented a function to you, the same function, in four ways. Equation, data, graph, or words. Four ways, equation, data, graph, or words. And, and throughout this course, you kind of got to go from one to the other. I mean, you know, if the problem starts off as a word problem, then you start with the words and you kind of think about it. Maybe, maybe you do what I did. I went from the words to the data. <clears throat> uh, maybe I would go from the words to the equation. Then I might go sketch a graph. I mean, we can go from one to the other. Maybe you have a graph and from the graph, you read these points. So from the graph, you get the data. I think everybody's favorite way is to start with the equation. The equation leads to the data, which leads to the graph. So that's how I started. But I'm suggesting that in this math class, we start in various places and go various directions. We can talk about this function in four ways, and we can start anywhere and get to the other ones, I think. <clears throat> um, Yeah, any questions? <clears throat> okay, good. So, <clears throat> so that was good. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, again, I've been teaching this class a while and, and I sort of present functions in this fashion. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this and talk a little more about functions. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> the, uh, I noticed in the homework, I, I like to make my charts kind of like I did. You saw my charts. They kind of run vertical. Uh, I noticed in the homework, they kind of got their charts running like this. So they have their X and their Y, and they, they kind of do this. So, I don't know. It's okay. It's the same thing, but it's, there's the X's, and then there's the Y's. There's the inputs, and there's the outputs. If, if it bothers you, maybe you could make it vertical. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh. So look at this guy. <clears throat> so here's a, the, a, a relationship between two variables. Uh, it presented in data form, okay? Presented in a chart form. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, I guess my question is, is it a function? And the only thing, that you, you go back to your basic definition of a function, it's on the board. Does every input have one output? And you can assume that the top row is the input and the bottom row is the output. And if they weren't, we weren't real clear about that. And you can also probably assume the X's are the input, the Y's are the output. 
Uh, but uh, <clears throat> is it a function? Yes. <clears throat> and he said yes. Uh, every input only has one output. I mean, this guy does not have two answers. This guy does not have two answers. Uh, Some of them share an output, um, but guess what? That's okay. That, that, that was not a violation in the definition of a function. It doesn't say they all had to have a unique output. Uh, they can have a shared output, but they do all have one. Every X has one Y. So, yes. If I wanted to not make, make it not be a function, I would just, I would add one more thing here. Watch this. I think I would do this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how your homework does this. Uh, they, they do these charts, but I don't know if I saw one like this, but watch. <clears throat> it, it's it's kind of, it's a little disguised, but what you, your job would be to recognize, wait a minute, this is the same input. And they, they wrote it twice, you know? I mean, it's the same darn input. And, and now, uh, uh, this input, which is the same as this input, has two different outputs. So all of a sudden, because of the two different outputs, uh, no, now it's not a function. Let me just get rid of that, though. Uh, but, right, that would be an example of not a function. Um, <clears throat> discuss this question is kind of graphically um, uh, there's a graph this is a picture of something here this won't be a line this will be a, a curve um, is it a function oh, yeah that's the question is it a function and uh, Kind of have your homework sort of start. Is are these things function um, <clears throat> in 1.1? Um, what do you guys think? Any ideas? Maybe you recall some stuff you already know. Maybe you're having a hard time sinking that in with this graph. Uh, I'll, let me watch this. I'll talk to you here. Look. So this is the x-axis, and, and and so your inputs kind of live here. And then your y-axis is this, and, and your outputs kind of live here, or what they kind of live on the function. So like, like here's an input value x. Now look, let's look up here. How many y values does it have? Looks like it has one y. What about this x? 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 One. All right, I, I'm kind of convinced every x has one y. I think the answer is yes. Here's one that's not. You ready? <clears throat> this is a beautiful thing in mathematics. In mathematics, I'm, maybe I'd call that an ellipse, or it's kind of a crappy ellipse. It's, uh, I definitely wouldn't say circle. I'd be embarrassed to call it a circle. Uh, egg might be better, but the point is it's a beautiful thing in mathematics. It is a relationship between two variables. It has a graph. There it is, but guess what it is not? It is not a function because this X, and not just him, but there's a lot of X's, but this X has sort of two Y's. See that? I mean, if I was plotting points, uh, this X right here would have a couple of different Y's, and therefore it's not a function. Now, what we just stumbled into then is this thing called the vertical line test. I mean, I could have just explained the vertical line test to you, but I wanted you to see what it means. <clears throat> but the vertical line test is, <clears throat> let me see, I can sort of, uh, I guess it's kind of right, uh, it's kind of cumbersome to write, it's easy to say, but uh, the vertical line test says when you have a graph and you draw any vertical line and it only touches the graph once, any vertical line only touches the graph once, 
It's a function. If you draw a vertical line that happens to hit the function more than once, it's not a function. The reason is you got an input with too many outputs. I mean, that's the, the explanation still goes back to that definition, but the, it's a little trick. It's called the vertical line test. I'll just say, uh, I'll just say it like I just said. I'll write what I just said. Draw any vertical line on a graph, on the graph. <clears throat> uh, if you touch the graph more than once, more than once, <clears throat> this writing might not come up too good on the video, but you can hear me saying this. If you touch the graph more than once, uh, it's not a function. The graph is not a function. It failed the vertical line test. It's not a function. Maybe you've heard this before. Maybe, maybe not. Um, <clears throat> Not very hard. In fact, that's that's the cool way. I mean, that's that's pretty easy. You like that question? It's easy. The vertical line test is easy to <clears throat> to determine whether something's a function or not. So looking at all that data was also kind of easy, but can, can get confusing looking at that data. <clears throat> and if I give you an equation, sometimes it's hard to tell whether it's a function or not. Look at this equation. Um, <clears throat> And by the way, once you start putting exponents and stuff on your variables, it's no longer a line. Uh, uh, again, I haven't really discussed lines, but <clears throat> lines are just x to the first power, y to the first power. They have, you, got, you don't have any, any exponents. So, so this is not a line, and it's some kind of relationship between two variables. It's an equation. Uh, it's... it's it, the question is, sorry, the question is, is it a function? And maybe it's a little hard to, to tell. <clears throat> you guys got any guesses? Guessing is one way. Right, you have a 50-50 chance if you're guessing, uh, but guessing is not really what you want to do. You want to think it through, and it's hard. I'm, I, I'm going to admit it. This is hard. It's hard to think through what, what the equation is doing. I mean, so what I really would like is a graph. If I had a graph, that would help me, but, but I don't really know how to graph this. Um, if I had a chart of data, that might help me. You know, Maybe I should make a little chart here, uh, but, 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 but that's kind of tricky here. Let me see. Uh, Oh, you know what, I might change something here. If I move the y squared over, it, that doesn't alter the, well, it does alter the look of the equation, but it, it, let me just move that y squared over. Um, so now it looks like this. And let me, and, and then I'm gonna plot some points again in my, but I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug something in for y, even though I think I, I'm still calling x the input. I'm gonna input something for y, if you don't mind. Does that bother you? <laughs> it bothers me. But <laughs> I'm going to plug in a 2 for, for y. If you plug in a 2 for y, what's x? 4. 4. Thank you very much. Right? That's easy, right? What if I plug in a negative 2 for y? 4. 4. All right. I think I just stumbled onto something. I think I stumbled onto the fact that if x is a 4, uh, there's two answers. There's a 2 and a negative 2. And therefore, it's not a function. Thank you. But that was tricky. I mean, that was, I mean, after I did it, it doesn't look too tricky. But staring at an equation and, and trying to decide whether it's a function or not takes a little investigation. And unless you memorize that anybody with a y squared is not a function. You can memorize that. <laughs> Okay, good. 